You're listening to Theological Discussions with Christian Anarchists. Well, I've got nothing better to do. He did not just say that. One man, one mic, plenty of scripture, and absolutely no filter for truth. He's a five-point Calvinist who affirms theistic evolution. He reeks of being hellbound. This guy shares more videos of James White than James White. He's just another stupid Bible-thumping Matt Slick wannabe. The views expressed on this show are solely those of the host and do not in its entirety express the views of the volunteering members of Spiritually Honest Ministries. Enjoy the podcast or get ready to send your hate comments. Beginning broadcast in 3, 2, 1. Yo, 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 it is Theological Discussion. I am the host, Christian Anarchist. What's up, everybody? Thank you for tuning in. Uh, always a wonderful pleasure to have you. And we're having a interesting podcast today. Uh, I got a guest on with me for this one. Uh, he's done some apologetics in the field, uh, evangelism as well. Good friend of mine. Uh his name is, you may know him because he's come on the Ask Christian Anarchist a couple times as Metal Minister. Metal, say hi to everybody. Hi to everybody. <laughs> yeah, we are uh, trying to get some stuff figured out with some mic and uh, technical issues earlier, but uh, we got all set of that. Lord, nothing's going to stop us from having this podcast, Lord willing. So we're going to just get right down to it. Um, so... A while back, G-Man had made a video uh, response or, or, or a challenge or call out or something towards me where he had seen the videos that had been posted about 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 4 and believes this is blasphemy to, for people to believe that the passage ref- that says about the God of this world, that it can refer to Yahweh, the God of the Bible, um, you know, he thinks that's kind of a little blasphemous to uh, indicate that. So we're going to actually take a look at this, uh, the video that he actually sent or uh, made and go over some of uh, the points. So uh, I'll stop it if I need to do anything. And uh, if Metal has anything that he wants to specifically comment on, he'll uh, let me know uh, whenever we do so. But anyways, let us uh, go straight to the video. Uh, so we can take a look, or in this case, the audio. Okay, if this thing will play the button. And today we're going to be talking about the Google Hangout that I had um, concerning, uh, you know, uh, my argument, my, my issues with Steve McRae and atheism, as well as uh, talking to Christian anarchist and his view on Second Corinthians chapter four, verse four. Uh, before I get started, I want to say a couple of things. Not all Christians agree with him. Not all Calvinists agree with him. And if you think I'm getting on him, I know some other Calvinists would get on him as well. Today, I'm going to try to not only rebuke Christian anarchists, but I'm also going to try to help him understand why what he said was completely stupid. Um, matter of fact, forget the word stupid. Why it was so far in left field. Well, you wanted to comment on there, Metal? I was just going to point out you sent me this uh this uh, video uh yesterday mm-hmm. and this is something i've noticed a lot with g-man he tends to go directly and straight for the insult um it, this is a very common mo and on top of that we're going to see this throughout this video he tends to use the bandwagon approach for everything well if some people disagree with you that must mean you're wrong yeah, that's yeah. a logical fallacy, to say the least. Yeah, I mean, especially when you just yeah, because that seems to be the thing. It's like because I'm a Calvinist, then let's go to what other Calvinists say. Uh, that's not necessarily how you know things work. And then as you, you'll hear later on, he immediately starts with just stupid, and it's so far left field. Well, let's see 
what he meant that it's so far left field what he means by that that it would contradict the whole of scripture not to mention his own theology as a calvinist which i'm going to prove early in this video today. this gets so, funny by the way i mean let's get to it what does it say in second corinthians chapter 4 verse 4 obviously i don't have a bible in front of me so i'm oh, gonna have to do before we continue i just want to mention this before he because he might get into calvinism immediately when he finishes the reading part here uh is if you watch the 40 minute discussion on my channel he actually said that i would have to read this because it's consistent with calvinism but now he's made a video claiming that this view contradicts calvinism i just want to point that out before we continue oh, I'm reading, but I'm reading, but I'm reading, oh. what it says it says that um if our gospel be hid it is the God of this world that has blinded the minds of them that believe not, lest uh, they should come into the glorious light of the gospel, which is found only in Jesus Christ. Now, that's me doing it off the top of my head. If you want the technical verse, go get a KJV Bible uh, or get a Bible, and you can see the verse that I'm talking about. It's in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 4. Now, I interpret... The God of this world or the God of this age is being Satan. Um, historically speaking, that's what people thought today. Well, to be fair, he is, he's right in the sense that people historically have thought that, but there's also people historically that have thought that uh, it's referring uh, to God, the to God, God of the Bible. Um, actually, it was going to say really quick. Um, he he did a fairly good job in doing that from memory mm -hmm. um but i i kind of want to read uh read it uh out uh from starting from verse three and going through uh verse six mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um now i'm reading from the nasb um i i think it, at least it comes across to me that g-man tends to be a bit of a kjv supremacist but he just um, prefers it. He just prefers it. Yeah, uh, I hope that's all it is, because, but that's a whole other can of worms we won't get into. Um, but <laughs> anyway, again, starting from verse three, and even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing, in whose case the God of this world has blinded the minds of the unbeliever, so that they might not see the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. For we do not preach ourselves, but Christ Jesus is Lord, and ourselves as your bondservant for Christ Jesus' sake. For God, who said, light shall shine out of darkness, is the one who has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. Now, I, I would actually myself, I would point out, I mean, when you start with verse 3, and I know we'll get into this more especially if you're looking at this from a Calvinist view, when it mentions that the gospel is veiled, who is the only person, the, or the only being that could veil the gospel? It's God mm -hmm. himself. Mm -hmm. No one, unless you want to say that Satan has power over God. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So, so the, uh, but yeah, and you're right there. Um, so, and we're going to get more into that later on. Um, but one of the things pointed out, um, one of the other historical things, because G Man said this is historical, I meaning he's appealing to tradition and the church fathers that they also held to this view. Um, but then there's some that held to a different view, which is that it being God. If you read John Chrysostom's homilies, he basically says, quote, But what is the God of this world? those that are infected with Marcion's notions, meaning he's re challenging the heresy of Marcionism, affirms that it is said of the creator, the just only and not good, for they say there is a certain God just and not good. But the Manichaeans say that the devil is here intended, desiring from the passage to introduce another creator of this world besides the true one very senselessly. So when the Manichaeans read this and saw God of this world, they did think it was Satan, but they thought he was likewise a creator God and that Satan was the creator 
of the world. And that's why he deserved the title. And then it says, for the scripture useth often to employ the term God, not in regard of the dignity of that so designated, but of the weakness of those in subjugation, as when it calls the man and Lord and the belly God. But neither is the belly therefore God nor man and Lord, save only of those who bow down themselves to man. But we assert of this passage that it is spoken neither of the devil nor of another creator, but of God of the universe, and that it is to be read thus, God hath blinded the minds of the unbelievers of this world. So even himself, he says, but we assert, meaning there is a plurality of a consensus in the agreement of the particular passage. Now, I just wanted to point that out, uh, that, you know, he's right in a way. Traditionally, people thought it was the devil, but also traditionally people have thought that it was referring to Yahweh. That's what people think. Whereas Christian anarchists, with his very weird teachings, again, is trying to teach that God is preventing you from believing in him. The Calvinists, you run into a lot of problems with that line of thinking, and I'm going to prove it. How many of you out there have heard of Calvinists talk about total depravity? How many of you know what that is? Here it comes. Apparently, total depravity teaches... We are so simple that we're so depraved that apart from God, we can't come to Christ. That's what total depravity teaches. I hold on, let stop for a second. Stop for a second. Okay. It, no, no, no. That is taking the entire view of total depravity or total inability and just squashing it flat. And then taking, you know, just making it, taking it from three dimensions and trying to squash it down to, you know, two dimensions. There's a lot more to it than, than just that. Considering as Calvinists, we tend, you know, we are compatibilists. Mm -hmm. You can't just say, squish, I'm going to make a straw man out of this, and that's all you're going to run on. Um, the, the idea behind total inability is we do not want to come to God, period. Our heart is a heart of stone, and until God has changed it to a heart of flesh, we want nothing to do with God. Period. Mm -hmm. and, and so the, what he's doing is, is is he's strawmanning the position right from the beginning, and he's he's making a false dichotomy here as well. But you'll you'll see that as as we go along. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Because he's about, to, and you'll probably hear in about a few seconds. So here we go. Wait a minute now. When a person's born, they're in this state. It's not God preventing them from coming to the faith. They're born in a state of total depravity. We're so depraved, we're so sinful, that apart from the, 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 the power of God, this person can't come to faith, right? Think about that for a minute. Let that settle in. If a person's already depraved when they're born, and they can't come to the gospel, they can't come to the truth, then that would be no, that would no, God has no. stopped the stop <laughs> oh, sorry. No, it's not that they can't. It's they don't want to. Period. It is not a matter of can't, don't want to. You know, I, I've used this this analogy before. It's a matter of you are horribly, deathly hate chocolate ice cream to the the extent that you would walk a mile on broken glass in the opposite direction to get away from it versus a bowl of vanilla ice cream. Mm -hmm. I put both down in front of you. What are you going to go for? You're going to go for the vanilla because you want nothing to do with the chocolate. Mm -hmm. That's closer to total inability than the idea that, well, we can't. We want to, but we can't. That's not how it works. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Exactly. And I think about well, that. Yeah, I was just going to say. I mean, I know for a fact that the uh, the guys on the council spent uh, at least five different nights going over this with G Man live on YouTube, um, explaining these things to him, and he still either he doesn't understand it or he's understanding it. Yeah, I mean, I told him that, uh, you know, to, because I thought he was not, in a way, I thought he was right with what he said, but that he wasn't going into the whole picture, actually. And he said, well, when I ask a Calvinist, I'm like, 
That's not how you get your sources. You don't just, hey, let's ask people about things. That's like letting the culture or something def define terms. If you want to actually understand the sources, I mean, certainly there are different Calvinists that are going to define it differently based upon the wording, but they ultimately agree on the same consensus de definition that you'll find in the official Reformed sources. You'll find it in the Canons of Dort, where they've discussed these issues about total depravity and what it is. You can find it in Reformed Confessions. Heck, just get a systematic, or look in a systematic theology textbook and look for the section on total depravity. I mean, heck, I'll give him my book on Calvinism so he can have a laid out technical term about total depravity and what it is. I mean, that's all you really, to me, it's, you just need to know how the definition and its totality states. Don't just ask a Calvinist. Look at the sources. Read and study the things because you need to find the definition that everyone's going to agree on. Anyways, but let's uh, continue down the, the road for the video. If a person's already depraved when they're born, and they can't come to the gospel, they can't come to the truth, then that would mean that God has stopped them from birth, from even before they left the woman's womb to believe in the truth. Okay. Um, yeah, I was just going to say, if, if you hear a thumping sound, that's just me head desking. <laughs> oh. Yeah. No, no. What part of they don't want to seems to escape G Man. Mm -hmm. That's that's all I can that's all I can ask. It's not a matter of, you know, God says, Okay, I'm gonna keep you from and even if that was the case, then what he's saying would lend even more cred credence to the idea of it being Yahweh in Second Corinthians four four. Mm -hmm. Especially considering in four three it's talking about the gospel being veiled to them. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. I, I'm just trying to, because it says they are unbelief. The note I little made for myself here is that they are unbelievers by nature, as you stated. They are not going to desire and come to Him, and that plus, even at the case, God can still harden them as like a def, like just to keep them there for sure. But this happens when they grow up and such. But of course, I I don't know if he's going to ask again. But you know. <laughs> Here's a good hypothetical to play devil's advocate here. What would um, what would you say if you know if they're already hardened, or you know already blind to the to the truth to the gospel? Why would God have to harden or blind them again if they're already blind? That that would be an interesting uh, question. Well, I would just point out. We'll go back to the same example: who hardened Pharaoh's heart? Mm -hmm. Who kept Pharaoh from seeing the truth, even though on multiple occasions he did see the truth? Mm -hmm. Yep, that's that's right, right there. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Pharaoh's definitely the good example. I mean, he was given the opportunities um, way before, and then you had Moses comes in, and then you know hardens the Pharaoh's heart so that he wouldn't respond to what was being seen. Um, then there were times he hardened his own heart, and then later he, you have God still hardening. Um, yep. um, so, so, oops, sorry. No, you go ahead. No, you go ahead. I was just going to say. I mean, Jesus even says such things. He says that he spoke in parables so that they would not see the truth, because they weren't of the elect. I mean, he he spells it out pretty well <laughs> himself. Um, so, I mean, we're talking about Jesus specifically stating that he doesn't want certain people to hear the gospel and with the power of the gospel come to faith in him. Who's veiling here? That is Jesus veiling them here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And there was a, I actually saw another video where Jim and kind of like responds to those uh, kind of things is that, uh, we, that he basically says that no that was the gospels you know uh 
we don't have that now uh, because Jesus was only doing that so that the Jews wouldn't believe so that they could crucify him, even though we still see the same language and the scripture that he goes back to still being used in Acts 28 for the Apostle Paul in verses 25 to 27. And I just now noticed we got a live comment from Jamal saying Calvinism, a subtle lie of the devil. Uh, so that's always oh, interesting. That's always interesting. Um, but yeah, uh, let's uh, let's continue to the video and see where G-Man goes with this. That would be unbiblical. If you look in the scripture, uh, uh, I think it's specifically weird, but it says, and I quote, that God is not the author of sin. Neither, neither can God be tempted with sin. My question is this, is unbelieving a sin? Uh, me and Evangelist Ken was talking about this before I um, talk about this. So I want to give uh, partial credit to this, what I'm going to do right now to Evangelist Ken, bro. I hope you're doing okay. My question for you, Christian Anarchy, is this unbelieving is if a person chooses, if, if a person does not believe on Jesus Christ, is that a sin? See, now we get to the issue of free will here now. Hmm. And every uh, you want to say something? Yeah, again, this, this whole argument stems from a, fall, a failed false premise. He is asserting that God is the one who keeps people from um, to people depraved, but it's not the way it works. Total inability is that human beings do not want to come to God. It changes their heart. That means that any argument hung off of that incorrect uh, uh, notion, it's nature. It isn't that God has stopped them and therefore one or the other. He's creating a false dichotomy here. It's the point that as humans, we do not, as fallen sons of Adam, we do not want to know God. That's not, the, God doesn't have to do anything there. We already don't want anything to do with him. Mm -hmm. Yep. I mean... I just, I just hope the more that we get into the G-Man video, you like some people can learn from what's being spoken here. Because the one thing I notice is that G-Man will tend to just say things uh, with false dichotomies and just make false uh, prepositions. I mean, because the one thing I notice is if he's going to use this argumentation that, you know, God, since if he, you know, hardened them and blinded them and did this whole thing, he caused them belief and he's the author of confusion the author of sin he caused them to sin people could do the same thing about you know when he told isaiah hey isaiah go and uh, make the you know blind their eyes fatten their hearts uh cover their ears so that they won't hear see and therefore convert and be healed and even says you know how long should I do this? He says, do this until they are destroyed to where no inhabitant uh, will be uh, will be existing in the land. So he basically says, prevent them from listening to the truth. So therefore, they may be destroyed. Um, people would say, well, God told Isaiah to do that. He's like basically saying they no longer have a chance. That's that's sin. That's that's a God of hate, you know, but we know as Christians that God has every right to do what he wants. He has every right to judge his, his people, especially when they've been given a chance, which I'd say the same thing applies to what's going on in uh, Second Corinthians. They've, these, these unbelievers have had a chance to believe. They've had a chance. And now they are given over to a reprobate mind, as we see in like Romans 1, and that they no longer have the chance they are therefore hardened to where it's definitely every time you give them a chance they're just going to simply mock and ignore the message they're going to be the scoffers just like during the days of noah well i would i would even point out now i mean g-man talks to enough enough atheists and gets mocked and hears jesus and hears god and hears the word mocked enough and i'm i know he's shared the gospel with them so, I mean, are you saying that 
you know, you don't know where that that mockery comes from. It comes from a depraved, you know, heart that hates God. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So let's uh, let's get further into what G-Man is uh, going on about. I know we were starting to act like Dr. White. 20 minute video and we're going to be at it for two hours. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, which is actually interesting. Cause he, he's probably going to say at one point, uh, you know, but yeah, actually, you know what? I'll wait until he gets to that. Come to this particular topic. If a person chooses not to believe is that person in sin, I would say yes. And the majority of the body of Christ would say yes, that that person is in the perpetual state of sin because he would not believe the gospel of truth. Now, how can God say that he's not tempted by sin, nor, um, nor, nor does he sin, if he's causing you to sin? Okay, so he's not, so like I said, not causing anyone to sin anymore that he caused the Jews to sin by crucifying Jesus. So, so that's the other thing. The crucifixion, that was planned to happen. That's been predicted in the prophecy. How are you going to do this? Well, in order to ordain and get this to happen, well, you have to get a sin to be done, have, don't you? That is to kill an innocent person with intent, to murder an innocent person with intent. And that was Jesus. Jesus was killed. By who? The Jews of which you say were hardened in the hearts to not believe so that they could crucify him. And so did God arrange and set up the prophecy that includes the crucifixion meaning that he set up the the sin of murder hmm some people will then say this is god causing sin and therefore you have the muslims and atheists saying ah contradiction you have god causing sin but we as christians don't hold to that view and I'm sure if G-Man were consistent, he would say the same thing, that no, this isn't that. So likewise, I would hope he would be more consistent and consider that line of argumentation here. Yeah, I mean, this would go back to what I was discussing earlier, is the fact that as Calvinists, not hyper-Calvinists anyway, um, we would hold to compatibilism, that it is a matter of the Jews... The the Romans uh, at the time, they wanted to crucify Jesus. Herod wanted to, to you know, ha have Jesus beaten in front of him uh, and, and to be mocked and then sent back, you know, to Pontius Pilate. He, Pontius Pilate, we saw, he was like, I'm done. I'm washing my hands of this. This was all compatibilistic they all wanted to do what they did it isn't a matter of of god having to force them to do it as a matter of fact it's the opposite that in day-to-day -day life if god lifts his hand a little bit we end up with horrendous things like what happened just recently in charlottesville or what happened even more recently uh in spain you know when we see that that sin of man basically allowed to run run a little bit free for a second that's all that takes is just is god just lifting his his common grace just a fraction and that is what would happen i mean if, if god were to remove his common grace altogether we would be standing on a smoldering burning rock and that's it mm -hmm. absolutely so i mean yeah definitely thank you for that uh, explanation there uh brother metal now let's uh like i said we're gonna try to not torture you too much with the video so let's uh quickly get back on board uh with it and by the way i got more than one point but i'm, I'm just pointing this out if non-believing if, if not believing in christ is a sin why would god not why would god participate in that and prevent you from believing it would be more logical to say that god would want to um do all he can to have a person believe so that's my point of my, my first point of contention. Total depravity argues against what he's arguing. No. Oh, uh, <laughs> there it comes. Total depra total depravity. Uh, no. uh, you want to take this one? Take this one. I said no. Um, G means incorrect. You know, uh, misrepresentation of total depravity creates this false dichotomy. The it's there is no. 
dichotomy here. Again, when you go back to the idea that we believe in compatibilism, and that total inability means that humans don't want anything to do with God unless their heart is changed by God, it takes all of his arguments to this point and just flushes them. There's nothing left. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, I mean, I don't get the, I don't get it. Like total depravity. If you know, if, if you've studied and actually explain it, then you'd understand this doesn't contradict the idea. Then it pretty much proves um, that you don't understand this. Just like Hebrew Israelites don't understand the idea about covenants, about what the term Gentiles refer to, all that stuff. It's a matter that you study the matter to know and that the consensus agrees of what happened uh, before then. So you have definitions that are laid out. And if you don't go with the definition, then you're not arguing that it's total depravity. Because if you actually knew you wouldn't be saying the statements you're saying. So let's oh, continue. continue. Oh, just sorry, quick, oh, oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, sorry. I, I have to apologize to everyone. I mean, I know we're, we are really seriously beating this dead horse to a pulp, but unfortunately, when you keep running into the same error over and over and over again, there's obviously a disconnect somewhere and it has to be addressed every single time. Otherwise, point someone will just focus on the one time that you didn't you know hammer the whole point home and they won't get past that ever again all right so let's uh let's get on and if either you were born totally depraved okay if either you were born completely and totally depraved and unable to keep any unable to do anything for god because without him you can't possibly do anything according to the calvinist right it's either you're totally depraved when you're born or God is the one stopping you from doing it. Which one is it? Both. It's just both. <laughs> is it you're totally depraved from birth or is it God stopping you from coming to the gospel? The gospel? Yes. Because if you're, really, if you're already totally <laughs> depraved, then you can't come to the truth anyway. So why would God have to stop you from coming to the truth? The, the, that was the question that I, uh, that I asked earlier. <laughs> Uh, just yes. I mean, think about it for a second. Like we said, God hard, hardened Pharaoh's heart. How many times did Moses come to Pharaoh to, and say, let my people go or this will happen? And Pharaoh said, whatever. The bad thing happened and Pharaoh went, oh, rats. That's right. He's correct. That's the truth. Let him go. And then just after that, boom. No, bring him back. We're not. You, you can't actually go. Mm -hmm. I mean, oh, I'm sorry. The, the misrepresentation is just so bad. I mean, I, I feel like this is going to sound mean, but I feel like I'm talking to Leighton Flowers. <laughs> mm. Yeah, because <laughs> I remember there were times and I've actually been in a couple of the hangouts um, with the guy that he's made some straw man arguments against uh, the whole. Thing. And I said, I'm a Calvinist, and this is what I believe. It's like, well, no, this is what, uh, you know, total depravity is. I'm like, no, it's not. I mean, I believe it. I'm, trust me, I know what I'm talking about um, and such. So, you know. All right. Let's, uh, let's get on into the video. Okay. I guarantee you another false teacher is going to be put on top of that to defend it. I guarantee it. Keep your ears open for Christian anarchists. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm wait, saying. Wait, yeah, wait, yeah. Sir, wait, wait, wait. The, the Bible is a false teacher? <laughs> Does he realize what he just said? He, he, what, what was he saying was before saying? that? I've just kind of, he, because he said the, uh, let me, let me rewind it back. That's at 541. Okay. Yeah. Cause, all right. So here we go. On top of that, to defend it. I guarantee Oh, wait. No, no, no. A little bit before then. All right. So if the video will load, because it's kind of lagging. Ready to only depraved, then you can't come to the truth anyway. So why would God have to stop you from coming to the truth? That's what he's saying is the 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 part right there. 
guarantee you another false teaching is going to be put on top. So, yeah, the, the question that we try to do devil's advocate for, of you know, if we're sinful or if they were depraved, why uh, would he need to blind blind us anyway? He says that's a false teaching. <sighs> hmm. I'm sorry, but haven't you and I been focusing pretty much exclusively, I think with one exception, on what the Bible says? And the only exception was John Chrysostom? Yeah, I only mentioned him because yeah, he mentioned the... So we're looking at, you know, fairly, you know, relatively early church um, and something that was believed by people at the time. So it was to not, you know, allow uh, G-Man to straw man the argument even further with the idea of, uh, you know, making it the, the what is it, the, uh, the, uh, Fall the fallacy of like nobility or something like that where because it's a fairly supposedly a fairly new argument it must be wrong well no and just because you your argument may be considered old doesn't necessarily mean it's correct either i mean <laughs> the idea that you could sail off the end you know the edge of the world was a fairly old argument it's wrong but flat earthers would still believe it. Doesn't make it right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, and yeah, like you said, I only mentioned Christendom because he mentions that it's that the view he holds is traditional, and I said, and I agree. Well, with the exception that so is mine. I mean, both have roots in traditional uh, roots. But we, as we, as you said, we've been only dealing with the Bible. When I did my video on this, which is about eight minutes, I dealt with the Bible. I didn't. I only mentioned briefly, you know, here's a little paper you can check out and read yourself. But for the sake of the video, I'm reading scripture. I've read to you the New Testament. I've read you John. I've read you Isaiah. I've read you these other passages which mention it. Um, <clears throat> heck, I might even just write myself a little exegetical paper, which is just no quoting scholars or anything. Just reading the passages, like a little Bible study of the subject in a in a thing so people can look at the verses and examine for themselves uh the issue so let's so let's see where g-man goes after this to defend it i guarantee it <laughs> keep your ears open for christian anarchists yeah that, that, that's what i'm saying true yeah he is sound like general han solo i told him to, to, to get away from that guy a long time ago and he won't do it so now we have true empiricism the guy that is uh dishonest and goes after and is promoting, but he, while he promotes intelligent design, is definitely very uh, dishonest and lies about you know things that he has said, such as that uh, uh, DNA or something uh, dissolves in water. Like uh, he he thinks that uh, it dissolves in water rather than or something degrades or something like that. I don't know exactly the full story about that. It's been a while since he said that, but the re but like the recent thing. Because you, if you watch his hangouts, he deletes them as soon as he's done with them. And the reason why is because he says some stuff that is just ridiculous. Uh, uh, one of the recent ones being that, uh, what was it? Uh, the bird's beak or something. He says that evolution can't produce things like if you get a, a bird's beak uh, to uh, evolve into uh ATP synthase or something like he was just basically saying you know all these uh, science fancy words hate to sound like the the southerner here but uh he was saying all the science science fancy words uh, basically and it made no sense of what he was saying and it's and to me I've only heard of him just through being on the fence I've never really had a chance talking to the guy or to meet the guy um and yet here he goes talking as if he's studied me, he's seen my videos, or he knows me. Um, um. I was going to say, I, I can't say anything to, about true empiricism. I have i don't think I've ever seen any of his stuff. I haven't ever interacted with him, so I can't say anything about him one way or the other. But I will say this, uh, General Han Solo would not agree with us on this. Yeah, and that's what a yeah, G-Man's going to get to in a few 
Yeah, because he's a uh, right here. He's about to. But you know, you'll learn part about you'll learn. Solo. So o- although 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 Christian Anarchist did tell me that General Han Solo um, uh, disagrees with him on his point, I have to say that. All right. So I believe that he's arguing against total depravity. And number two, he's confused. Because whoever believes this nonsense that the God of this world is God in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 4, now has to say that it isn't total depravity that's keeping somebody from coming to Christ. It's God himself that's keeping people from coming to Christ. So I just want to let y'all know the reason why I decided to keep the clips in here that where he keeps repeating this is just because how silly that he rants about this and eventually gets way too emotional. So just letting y'all know, we're not going to respond to the total depravity things because we've already established that he's straw manned us the when it comes to the total depravity. It's a very stupid line of theology. It is not well thought out. Christian anarchists need to stop reading those little study notes that's in his Bible and actually read and pray and ask God for understanding. You know, that's funny because if I actually read the study notes in the Bibles that I have with me, um, they would actually be in agreement with you. So you would actually be getting me on your side if you told me to read those study notes for some of the modern stuff that I'm having. Because in the NIV study Bible, it says it's uh, the devil. In the Reformation Heritage study Bible that I have, it says it's the the devil. In uh, a couple commentaries that I have from Matthew Henry and Harper's Bible commentary, they say it's the devil. The only thing that's really saying um, that it's not the devil are a few of the early commentaries, uh, some modern scholarly commentaries that are just pricey, like the expositor's commentary, and scholarly, peer-reviewed, uh, biblical scholarship papers that have been going out. Um, <clears throat> so... If I actually took my time reading study notes, that would actually agree with you, G-Man. So, wish you'd understand that part. Uh, but I didn't read the study notes for that. I read the Bible itself. I mean, I had a compact Bible on me at the hand when I was looking at it. And I just read, you know, the the Bible. No study notes, no commentaries needed. So, all right. Now, let me interpret the verse for you guys the way he claims his reading. And when I says that uh, in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 4, that if our gospel be hid, it is because the, 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 the God of this world or the God of the Bible has blinded the minds of those who don't believe, lest they come to the glorious uh, gospel through Jesus Christ. So it isn't total depravity. That's keeping us from believing in the Lord. It's God preventing us from, from um, believing in the Lord. I'm not really getting an understanding why Christian anarchists is, is, is believing in this. And that's not my only point. Then he tried to argue. This is when he started really getting mad at me. So he tried to say because I wasn't letting him talk. Yeah, right. He knows he was getting called out on this nonsense. And- uh, it wasn't being told not that I was not uh, being able to talk. I was able to talk. But I was being interrupted when I was reading stuff, and especially when I was reading the scriptures. If you go back and watch the video that I have, um, you'll see that I was trying to read Romans 9, and what does he say at the end when I'm just reading verse? I'm just reading the passage. I'm not putting words into it in Romans 9. He says, and that's Calvinism, and that's Calvinism. So, he admits Romans 9 is Calvinism, according to G-Man, based on the video. Go back and watch it. Don't take my word for it. Do your research. Do your homework. Go back in the video and watch it. It's there. And not just on my channel, but if you go to the video on my channel, the full link is there that takes you to G-Man's full hangout. So it's on both of our channels. Um, um, I'm sorry. I was just going to say, because he's, he's talking about, you know, you're talking about Romans 9, and he's talking about, you know, God not being the one to keep people from the gospel, except that we, as we read in, in 2 Corinthians 4, 3, that the gospel is veiled to those who are perishing, those who are unbelievers. Well, Romans 1, 16, for I am not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God for salvation to everyone who believes. Mm-hmm. So it is the power, the gospel is the power of God. In other words, the gospel is so powerful 
And this is why Jesus had, had mentioned it in parables only to the Jews. It is so powerful that if not veiled to those who are not, you know, who are, are unbelieving, they would believe. We are talking about the literal power of God in the gospel message. All right. Yeah. I mean, just, I just wish G Man is a watch in this. I just hope he does because Metal, you're saying some very good stuff. And, and we're, we're not trying to pick on the guy. I mean, like I said, no, I said no, absolutely not. Yeah, like I said before, I believe he's still. I believe he's a Christian. Um, I'm not gonna. I, I'm not gonna. I, was say, I, was, I appreciate that he's willing to stand, to kind of stand in the pocket, and take shots from people, and still spread the gospel. Mm -hmm. I'm perfectly. I, I I appreciate that he's willing to do that. And like I said, like you said, we're not trying to pick on him. Um, it's just a matter of we have to correct errors before they sprout and grow wings and get even you know even worse uh there's a, a an old saying um uh the truth flies and or, excuse me that a uh, falsehood flies and the truth comes limping afterwards um i forget offhand who said it it's one of my favorite quotes though because unfortunately error whether intentional or unintentional tends to move very quickly and it takes longer for the truth to be presented and try to erase that falsehood. All right, we got about eleven minutes left in the video. Let's let's go ahead and knock them out so that way I can uh, get to my breakfast and my shower. Shower. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, dude, you're cool. It's cool. I mean, I'm just trying to figure out how to like. I'm still having to wait to try to figure out like how to speak in the you know say something that can segue it um, without being too awkward especially i mean i'm <clears throat> trying to clear my throat out a little bit here all right but yeah let's uh let's see what else uh g-man has to say it wasn't, it wasn't very well thought out okay so. he said that when you see the word little g there you guys are gonna love this one that he's talking about angelic beings or is talking about God himself. Oh, now I just want, because he's gonna finish, uh, we're gonna let him finish here, but I just wanna point out, go back to my video. He, that was the, one of the parts he interrupted me on because I was gonna say, it also refers to, uh, you can be in reference to angelic beings, it could be reference to God, it can be in reference uh, to idols because um, the Old Testament uses that language really for idols and such whereas new testament rarely will use it and mostly and just uses the term, for, term idol. for idol yeah and i was going to i'll point this out the the usage of a small g in english does not necessarily exactly reflect what the word would have been in the greek or the hebrew i mean in both cases there is no punctuation there is no capitalization there is no lowercase there's it's all the same size and it's all one giant basic run on sentence. There's no paragraph breaks. There's no verse breaks. There's no anything. There's no chapter breaks. It's all one long thing, all the same size at all times. So to, to, to base a theological point off of an, something that's in an, you know, an English translation is not necessarily the best way to go. Mm hmm. And in fact, I actually decided to take a look in my uh, 1611 uh, King James Bible. And what I found was actually quite interesting, too, because uh, in the 1611 version, uh, because he says, you know, it was a printo, it was a typo. Um, in a way, it was because the original 1611 King James Bible, which this will be good for those who try to use this argument, and they argue strictly from the 1611 King James Version. The 1611 King James Version uses capital G in whom the God of this world. It uses capital. But now the editors for the revision that came later use lowercase for, for the term. And 
And, and there's, this isn't the first time you see it. Like, if you go to Philippians 3.19, the King James either way uses the term, uh, what is it? Uh, capital G, God. God is their belly. Meaning that a, that they're their God that leads them to destruction is their belly. But in the ESV, it uses little g. So this is all simply editor's uh, stuff. It's not the result of a... <clears throat> uh, you know, all of that mess and all that. It's uh, to me, if you just focus on the English, you have to then say Jesus spoke English to people back then, or that these were written in English originally. When the the Greek that's used, it used all capital letters. It didn't use lowercase then capital uh, there. If you look at a manuscript, which I link in one of my videos to P forty six. Um, it was an all capitalization thing that was used. So, but anyways, yeah, let's uh, let him finish his uh, point. Help me out here, guys. <coughs> I mean, it's not we'll just scripture in the Old Testament specifically, particularly Exodus or Deuteronomy or something. When God is telling the children of Israel not to bow down, the... let me help you guys out. Tell me, does this look like a demon to you? Just help me out here a minute. When he tells them not to bow down and worship what? Wood, sticks. Not to bow down and worship the sun or the moon or anything like that. Those look like angelic beings to you? Absolutely not. Now, what he will argue is, oh, those are representations. Uh, no, not really. I would not but let's just say that at all. In fact, I would actually argue with what uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 4 says, which Paul gives the rebuttal towards the thing when it comes to eating that which has been offered to idols. You know, the meat that's been killed and sacrificed towards idols and then it's being sold on the meat market there was a division about whether or not we should do that first corinthians chapter 8 verse 4 paul basically um says as concerning therefore the eating of those things that are offered unto sacrifice unto idols we know that an idol is does he say that an idol is a pagan god that we need to uh fear from people uh turning to christ no that an idol is a pagan god that wages war against uh, God? No, it says an idol is nothing in the world, and there is no other god but one. So he says it right here. We know that an idol is a nothing, and that there's only one god. There's only one. For though they are be that are called gods which are in heaven and in earth, as there be gods many and lords many, but to us there is but one God, the Father of whom are all things, and we in him, and one Lord Jesus Christ, by whom are all, all things, and we by him. So right there we see that to these people they would view them as such. But we know the truth. The truth is there's only one God. There's only one. So just want to let that point be pointed out before we continue. But then his speaking is definition oh. Are you going to say something there? Oh, yeah. Sorry. I was just going to uh, to just read something um, really quick here because I think this boils it down a little bit, and it comes down to the idea of is it possible for God to lose any whom have come to him, have legitimately come to him, not the, the false converts. But in John six thirty seven, all that the Father gives me will come to me, and the one who comes to me, I will certainly not cast out. For I have come down from heaven, not to do my own will, but the will of him who sent me. This is the will of him who sent me, that of all that he has given me, I lose nothing and raise it up on the last day. That's through 39. Meaning that those who actually come to Christ, whom God has actually changed their heart, will never ever fall for a false idol or false god or anything else it's just not possible sorry <laughs> right exactly right. talking about angelic beings why then is he cherry picking for his calvinism to argue that god is the one that's preventing them to uh prevent them to come to the faith even though it contradicts total depravity and the rest of his precious tulip because i'm going to use this against him in the future whether he knows it or not and anyone else who believes this nonsense, it says angelic beings, right? The devil is a fallen angel. 
the devil is a fallen angel. So even with that definition, we are justified to believe that that's the case. Now, and again, I have no problem with you having that as a justification because I agree that can be an argument to use to believe that it's referring to the devil. Um, uh, true. Hmm? Oh, sorry, I was just saying true. Yeah. So, but again, at the same time, you have to also consider the other part of the side as well. I mean, just like when it comes to Presbyterians and Baptists, Presbyterians have, an inter have a good case for infant baptism, not for salvation, because they don't believe that, but that at least, you know, the, the conservative evangelical Presbyterians compared to the liberal side, um, that these conservative Presbyterians believe, you know, baptism is a covenantal sign. It's a covenantal thing, just like with circumcision that, uh, uh, what, 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 what's it called? Um, the idea of circumcision with the uh, Israelites, for Christians, it's being baptized. That's our circumcision. Um, and that's like a, so a sign of putting one into a new co into a covenant or like being a member of a Presbyterian church and such. Like, you know, you have to have, in order to be a member of the church, you have to be baptized. Well, if you were baptized as an infant in Presbyterian circles, you can be a member of a church if you were baptized as an infant. Um, so that that's, a, you know, two different splits that have sound arguments that, you know, yes, you can have your thing. And of course, says, do not uh, say the children uh, can't participate in the things of the spirit of God. But then at the same time, you have definitely some good verses for believers' baptism. But you don't have people saying, you know, one's a heretic and the other's not. The only infant baptism that's heretical is that by the Catholic Church, which does actually use it to say baptism is the remission of sins and such. Um, mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I mean, like, yeah, I said, I mean like, I, like I said, like I said, I understand where G-Man is coming from on this, you know, so I'm not disagreeing necessarily, but I'm convicted still that it can, that it's still referring to God. But again, he actually brings up a good point about it referring, possibly referring to the devil, if we go by the definition of what the, the term God that's used there for. So uh, let us, uh, let us continue. I also asked him something else and I want to elaborate a little bit here too. Since, since humanity has started, who caused Adam and Eve to sin? The serpent, right? The serpent beguiled Eve. I wouldn't say that he caused them to sin. He tempted them. Uh, that their the cause of their sin was themselves. They were tempted. They had the ability to choose to obey God or to disobey. And with their curiosity, they chose and caused themselves sin because they they acted upon their desires and such. Um, I don't know what uh, what say you, metal minister, about that. That well, I would definitely say that uh, when when it comes to Eve, um, I, I could see that she had been, uh, like you said, like maybe maybe deceived. She was deceived, but it, Paul tells us that Adam was not deceived; that he knew what was going on. He was there. He with you know with God first. He you know he witnessed part of God's creation. You know and his process. Um, so, but of course, at the same time, he ended up choosing Eve as opposed to God in that case. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, 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 and it was a completely different concept here. We have now before you could have said that there was a, a form of free will. Um, but at the same time, once it's, once the fall happens, it's, that's a moot point. That no longer means anything because the human heart now automatically despises God and the things of God. It's it's a non sequitur. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. I mean, the, the human heart despises God. It's non sequitur. So, um, yeah, I just would say, you know, just to point out before we just to elaborate before you continue, you know, that we don't believe it was necessarily that the devil was the cause. Uh, 
a brother that still he tempted them he was the cause of temptation but the sin itself was the act of that's like held accountable towards um adam and eve agreed mm -hmm. all right so let's see what we got here and then ultimately tempted adam to sin right a lot of people say the serpent uh, tempted adam that's not that's not the case the serpent tempted eve and then eve gave some of the fruit to her husband that was there and she was deceived i'm no, no, sorry he was deceived i'm sorry oh uh you want to comment on that because he said that he was deceived no i mean paul tells us specifically and of course i don't have i don't have it marked in my bible at the moment <laughs> but paul tells us that that adam was not deceived he had satan did not deceive adam at all adam went into it knowing full well what he was doing yeah it says it right yeah, here right. uh first timothy chapter 2 verse 14 and adam was not deceived but the woman being deceived was in the transgression so yeah it's right it's right there uh first timothy chapter 2 uh verse 14 says that adam was not deceived so to say that adam is not deceived or say that adam was deceived um is you know, as he, he says that I was the one that would be contradicting the scripture. Well, there's one right there. He says that Adam was not deceived, but right there, Paul says in his epistle to Timothy, Adam, literally, word for word, Adam was not deceived. He wasn't the one deceived. So. Satan has been doing this forever. Think about it. Did God really say, then he calls God a liar and then preaches his own gospel or his own word or whatever, saying that you'll be like God's knowing good and evil. That's what we deal with the atheists, what we deal with Muslims or anybody out there. They're constantly trying to get us to doubt the word. They're trying to get us to question God's word and then hear what they got to say. They're alternative to what the gospel is talking about. So I highly doubt that the Muslim make the claim that we are making about the passage. I mean, um, when it comes to this verse, uh, <laughs> especially in the ones I've talked to, they would say, you know, Jews like Jesus and such were monotheists and he would then they would mostly go back to the traditional Jewish um, stuff and modern Jewish rab rabbinical Judaism commentaries and such to point out what uh, the passage is talking about rather than from a Christian perspective. Um, so it, a Mormon, for example, might agree with you that, yeah, that's referring to the devil and the devil is a God. So it'd be definitely a Mormon would be on your side probably for this uh, argument. But um, a Muslim would never agree with this. Uh, I've certainly had atheists sound like intrigue, but they also say I'm possibly doing a bit of a stretch with it. Um, and that's because they don't really study, at least the ones I've seen that, um, you know, are debated with. Uh, they, you know, who engage and claim the study of the Bible and such, they claim it's a stretch and they think that, you know, it's not part of the what the authors intend and such. Um, so, the Muslim, the atheist, um, even probably the Hindus and the Buddhists, I don't think they would agree with me about the passage, and they would actually be on your side disagreeing with me. So just want to point that out, especially telling what if you've got a Mormon who's a polytheist who can use this and say, yeah, there it is, proof of, poly a proof of the Mormonism is polytheism. The devil is a god. So Satan's been doing this since the beginning. Satan's been doing this from the beginning. So how then can, can, can he not see that the devil since day one has been causing people not to believe? <sighs> My goodness, I can bring up the flood. I can bring up Sodom and Gomorrah. You're going to tell me God was responsible for those people committing those homosexual acts and that he didn't desire for them to repent? Are you crazy? What? Wait, hold up. In Sodom and Gomorrah, didn't uh, he deliver the judgment? Uh, when, when was the repentance and desire in that passage? I would also point out, at this point, G-Man is ascribing to Satan that which is only God's, and that is omnipresence. Satan is a single individual angel. While he is incredibly powerful, as we have seen when God sent an angel uh, to uh, wipe out you know, an army, he is not omnipresent. Nor is he omnipotent, meaning that he cannot be in every single person on the planet's head at the exact same time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you're having, you know, he's he's ascribing to to Satan that which is only God's. That is an attribute of God. 
Exactly. And that's the thing that is rather ironic is that the things that he states about the the devil here then ends up or that he accuses us of doing, you know, that attributing uh something to the devil that only God, you know, that or attributing something to God that the, only the devil would do. He's then doing something by attributing to the devil only something God could do, and that is the attributes uh, thereof. Mm. Well, I mean, even going back to Sodom and Gomorrah, what did God tell Abraham? Mm -hmm. If there was, you know, righteous people in, in those cities, he would not destroy them. Mm -hmm. What happened? But that, but that, yeah. yeah. Yeah, he he did, he destroyed the cities because um, he been uh, he said it was going to happen, but Abraham had to beg because he knew that only uh, you know Lot and such were there. Um, so he wanted to try to give a chance, but it shows out uh, you know because God already has mindset. He knew that they were gonna they weren't gonna reach the qualifications that Abraham kept lowering the standards. So it's like. What if there was just these so tiny few people there? There weren't. And that's what was so sad is that it didn't reach Abraham's requirements. And God knew that they wouldn't do that. He knew that it was going to be destroyed and he was going to cast upon the judgment. Well, if you want, if you want a view of total depravity, think about what those people did after the angels struck them all blind. They worried themselves trying to find the door. They didn't try to go, oh, whoa, we just really screwed up here bad. You know, I, we need to repent and, and figure out what's going on. No, they continued to try to do the evil deeds. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, so, yeah, even when they're being attacked or struck down by God's judgment, they could probably still have had a chance to repent at that point. Uh, but even then, like, if we're letting that example go they would not have done it. It shows that that's how depraved they are, that they desired sin even in light of judgment. They still desire their wickedness even among the presence of God's judgment. That that's, even if they were literally blind, they had to realize, well, something did this that's supernatural, but it's like, uh, you know what, forget it. I'm just going to go back sinning. It's that kind of craziness that, you know, we see it in people sometimes. And we saw this in Sodom and Gomorrah, and they were still judged and such. But, but you know what you're saying? Oh, nothing. I was just going to make this Mark comment, but don't worry. We can go, we can go on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, let's, let's, yeah, let's check back on uh, G-Man here because we got about like eight minutes, and I want to see – because I, I forget, like, what all uh, he did say at some point. So it's going to – so some of this stuff is, like, refreshing a little bit to me. I'm the Baptist when you were preaching to the Israelites. That God didn't want them to repent at some point? Wait, wait, there's something wrong with you people? That, 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 I honestly think it's a cheapening of what Christ did on the cross, if you ask me. He's taking away the severity of what's going on here on the earth and what the devil has accomplished. Because right now we're living in the last days. The Antichrist spirit is alive and well in this world. And they are getting everyone ready for the man of sin to come about. So, yeah, so he, uh, I took out a... Uh, big portion there because he was basically ranting a little bit and he thought like part of what we're saying here is in part of the prophecy of you know the, the man of sin coming and such and that this is one of those uh false teachings that is coming about in preparation for the man of sin so uh definitely interesting stuff uh, if you ask me if you ask me well again i would just point out if it was only the devil that was causing problems in Sodom and Gomorrah. Then why on earth did he not have one of those angels or send down Abraham or someone else into the city and simply preach to them? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, if that's all it would take, if it's just a matter of, it's just Satan in there, why didn't he simply just cast Satan out of the cities? Exactly. No, because exactly. they... Or they were reveling in their sin. It was their, their heart. When it comes back to Noah's flood, if it was just Satan running around making all of these people you know, do bad things, why did he destroy everyone but Noah and his family? Why not simply cast the devil out of the area or have Noah just – I mean think about it. Noah preached. The whole time he was building that ark, he was preaching. 
but it didn't change anything. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, he, great. I'm, I'm a little, I'm a little, I'm trying to say something and I'll, all of a sudden get tongue tied and lost my train of thought. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> no, no, it's cool, man. No, you, what you say on here is helpful. I mean, I, that's the one reason I like I enjoy having guests on here because it adds more to the edification. It adds more to what the, the topic's being uh, discussed. It adds more meat uh, to the bones that we're preparing for the for the spiritual meal for all the uh, brothers that are watching right now, the brothers and sisters that are watching right now. So what you say, regardless, helps out a little bit, my friend. So I do appreciate you for coming on here. But let's see what else uh, G-Man as a uh, gun store because he went on his uh, thing about the the man of sin yes i'm calling you to repentance sir you don't know what you're talking about now what a lot of people don't understand mm. is that christian anarchist has been a christian about what two two and a half years or whatever usually before somebody's allowed to teach the scripture they have to at least study the bible for that amount of time well yeah, i guess he's about to go into a, a rant about you know me being young and such in the faith and that uh you know in order for me to be a preacher or something which i'm not necessarily a uh you know a pastor or anything like that which i agree you have to read the bible entirely to be one of those but even then like if you tell me about like commentaries and such those are from people who have read the whole bible and such um so just thought i'd mention that uh but yeah l listen to what he's gonna say here i think he's been doing it for that amount of time and I can't be quiet about this no more. I think 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 4 was the last straw with me and him. And by the way, for those of you who are out there, you heard me say this on um, in my uh, Google Hangout. I actually could be incorrect about James White um, agreeing with him. I had Evangelist Ken watch the video. And Evangelist Ken said it didn't sound like he was accepting the teaching. That, uh, that, that, that of the 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 4. In fact, it sounded like um, uh, Evangelist Ken told me that it sounded like he was just uh, doing a review of a video or a book and talking about uh, his views and opinions on it. Well, here's the thing. I I sent G-Man a Twitter about the thing, and he kind of, you know, he changed his statement. He's like, well, now James White is wrong um, and such. So, yeah, I mean, James White, uh, in the video that I posted, he does at one point in one of his old videos say, you know, that it's uh, referring to uh, that one of the person's uh, thesis was that it was referring to Yahweh and that not only did he say that we should consider the judgment uh, Old Testament context in light of the passage but in a recent tweet that I got from him yesterday um, you know I told him about you know what what's going on in the community here with the whole thing and kind of like how it is you know like there's a group of people that are saying it's referring to God of the Bible. Then you have the so's that are on G-Man's side that say it's referring to uh, the uh, the the devil. Um, and hit you know I kind of made the joke you know this this oh it's like Marvel Civil War and he you know just simply said quote the strange thing is that understanding referring to the one about uh, it being the God of the Bible is quite ancient and actually natural dot 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 if you recognize God judges actively in this life, which I think that's the point. God never changes and he continuously will be a judge upon people. And so likewise, if we take into the consideration of the context of the judgment language, um, it, it makes a lot of sense once you read it in light of context. Um, I don't know. It, it, Cause I, I don't know if you saw the tweet, um, Metal, but what what were your thoughts on that? Because I know his tweets are usually public. Public. No, I I, uh, I don't think I saw them. But then again, I don't check my Twitter very often. Uh, <laughs> I I tend to I tend to shy away from um, most uh, social media because it's just become a mess uh, in recent months. Um, it's just kind of crazy. It's not. I, I've got enough drama in my own life. I don't need to add everyone else's to it too. Um, but no, I mean it, it's true. I mean, ultimately, what does it boil down to? Even if you look at Job, Satan was not able to persecute Job until what happened? God gave him permission. 
And even then, God set up parameters that the devil could not cross. You know, he could not actually kill Job. Mm -hmm. But he could do just about everything else to him. And that's what he did. Mm -hmm. And what happened when, when God came down and Job had, you know, repented and everything? What happened? Mm -hmm. It was a matter of God had to specifically intervene for Job to realize what was going on and to change. Mm -hmm. Period. It wasn't a matter of, you know, of his, his own choosing. God came down and he says, was it uh, who speaks words without wisdom or something to that effect? I cannot remember it off the top of my head right now. Um, because Job had no idea what was going on, but God did. God was in control the whole time. So whether you look at it as Satan in this passage, ultimately, who has to be in control? God. Who has to be allowing Satan to do such things? God. Otherwise, you are giving Satan power over God. Absolutely. So, I mean, it, that's the other thing, too, thinking that, oh, you have to have this view because I'd be uh, consistent with Calvinism. I mean, great Calvinists such as John Gill and such held this view that it's referring to the devil. It didn't contradict their view of Calvinism. In fact, it would actually affirm it as well because you have the idea that God is in control and that he has to give the devil limits. And he knows that he'll give him the permission because if he gives him the permission, he'll only do it if ultimately God gets something in the end. And he knew that Job would not betray God and go to the devil in the end. He knew that he would stay with God. So, I mean, just read the book of Job and you tell me how it ends. Does he forsake God and never come back to him? Or does he eventually come to God um, and retreat to him during his times of need and his time of understanding during suffering? Just consider that for me as we uh, can carry on with our video here. Uh, if the video will load. Hmm. I think the thing's frozen, so hang on a second. Okay, I guess we need to queue up the Precious Right Fail theme. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. Uh Hmm. That's strange. All right, I'm going to try to get this back and running. All right, so we're having a little bit of some technical issues. Uh, don't worry, I'm getting this thing reset. So that way you can uh, go back to the specific moment. Um, don't know what happened there, honestly. Honestly. Well, actually, I mean, this might be a good time. Um, uh, Tyler Vela was uh, talking with myself and some of the guys in uh, the Council of Google Plus, um, and he had uh, a, a view on this. It's a, a little different from even yours and mine. Um, if you don't mind me reading that now. No, man, go ahead. No, man, go ahead. Okay. Well, he said, quote, I take the minority view that 4-4 is referring to God's act of reprobation. It fits the context better and is consistent with the binding of Satan, which is precisely that he cannot control people's godliness or godlessness any more political kinds of authority. Plus, it makes more sense of the following statement in 6. God is the one who declares, there, let there be light. Well, that argument only makes sense if God also blinds those whom he wills, in line also with Jesus' teaching in parables, as I said before. Or else Paul would be implying that Satan can stop a decree of God by blinding people. But I recognize it is the minority view, and there are good re re reasons to reject my view as well. It is a tough view, and no one should make any kind of dog dogmatic case based on it. And that's and that's from uh, and that's, and Tyler. That's from, uh... I agree with what that. Yeah, I mean that sounds very uh, good statement right there. That thank you for sharing that. And right, I think I may have gotten it fixed. We'll see how this goes. Uh, where are we? Uh, doing a review of a video or a book, 
and talking okay, yeah, about uh, his views and opinions on it. All right, so now we're going to pick up right here. I have to actually talk to James White myself to see where he stands on this. Because I'll black out on him just as fast as I'll black out on Christian Anarchist. A lot of you got me wrong on here because you think that I'm, all, I'm always just getting on atheists. Let me tell you something. You people think I'm hard on atheists. You should see what I'm like when I'm around a false teacher who claims to be a Christian that's got influence. You've never seen me like this. You put me in a room with a pope, I'll be G-Man times 90, 10, and times a thousand times. You put me in a room with a, with a prominent person of a, some cult, trust me, you haven't seen me go off yet. You would never see me go off yet. I'm really hard on people that claim they got the truth, that claim they're speaking for Jesus Christ. I'm very hard on them. So Christian anarchists, you need to repent of this nonsense. You need to, you need to uh, uh, get on your knees and start asking God to give you revelation. Stop reading all these commentaries. I understand commentaries can be good. I'm not knocking the commentaries. Well, he says that now, but I just but we're not going to comment right at this point. I just want you to listen very closely. Keep this in mind because this is the part where I lost it. I could not help but laugh at how much he mis not only misrepresented me, but how he just had to get all emotional about the whole thing that he almost acted like a little kid. Just, just listen. They can be good and they can get you understanding. But please understand that a human being wrote those commentaries. All right. And yes, I have a study Bible. My study Bible has commentaries. But just because the commentary is there doesn't mean I automatically agree with what I'm reading. Exactly. There are some Bibles where it tells you in the beginning that a Calvinist was part of this, a Pentecostal was part of this, this person was part of this. And then I'll go read the commentary and I can hear that particular denomination's opinion there. And I'll listen to it and I'll examine it with the rest of scripture. Then I will come up with an opinion about what I'm reading. Or I'll pray and I'll ask God, obviously praying to God first. Then you go about reading those things, and then you go about um, uh, because uh, uh, I did it backwards. I'm sorry. You're supposed to pray and ask God first. Um, secondly, you read these commentaries. You go to different websites and you find out how to interpret the scripture, mm -hmm. and then you line it up with the rest of scripture, and then you ask God to give you the final result about what you should believe. Which I, and do. I don't believe Christian anarchist is doing that. I believe that Christian anarchist is just in love with his commentaries, and he he believes it because the commentary said it. <laughs> Now, no, I never, I never, I've never done, I've never done this. Uh, uh, what, what? <laughs> that's sorry, enough, that's that's <laughs> but I got something better for you. Uh, this is I've never done this before on theological discussion, but first time I'm doing it. This is my thought when I saw this. Oh my God! Uh, <clears throat> Mm. I think the headache would feel better right now than listening to that. I'm sorry. Yeah, well. It, it, uh, but, mm. I don't believe a commentary just because it's a commentary. Um, if it's in the scriptures, it's in the scriptures. I examine the scriptures first because when I saw the commentaries or when James White had said something about this, I'm like, I don't know. That just sounds too weird. I would not. I wouldn't go as that far. But I actually looked in the Bible, and then I'm like, "Well, now this is actually interesting because I'm looking at the verses that parallel it." And I'm like, "Okay, let's study the scriptures a little bit more." So it took me a while to actually make the conclusion. So it wasn't just believing a commentary just because it's a commentary. Because every commentary is different. If I just believe the commentary is because they say so, I'd have to be contradictory. I say, "Well, um." It's A and B in a A or B uh, question. It's A and B is the answer. That would basically be the equivalent. But I don't do that because I try to study the different views and then study the actual passages in the Bible. And I went to several on this. So it's not just me accepting a commentary because it's a commentary. Sir. Coming in the last days, guys, and this is just more proof. More and more and more, we're going to see people getting away from sound doctrine and buying into these doctrines of devils they have nothing to do with Jesus Christ, our Lord. God is stopping people from believing the gospel. Uh, preventing, not necessarily stopping, but whatever term you want to be, uh, be using to find that, so find that. Does he disagree that Jesus stopped people from believing the gospel when he spoke to them in parables? He, he, he believes that uh, he did stop the Jews from believing just so they can crucify him. And he says that's only it and that he stopped doing that whenever he was crucified, that there was no more need for it.
what say you to that? <sighs> mm. I'm gonna break my desk. <laughs> mm. uh, that th- honestly doesn't that doesn't make any sense. I mean, can you point to me chapter and verse of where God said, you know, where God says that oh, I only blinded the Jews for the for the uh, crucifixion, and then I won't do it ever again, and I never did it before, and I won't. No, hmm. if you'd look, God does that sort of thing throughout. I mean, He specifically keeps certain people from knowing Him. Again, I'll point back to Pharaoh in the Old Testament. I mean, think about it. Judas was running with Jesus all that time, and yet, you know, he kept him blinded with Satan, right? He didn't cast Satan out of Judas. You're going to tell me Jesus didn't know Satan was there, even though he knew all of those other demons were in people that he cast out? Yeah, man. Yeah, man. It just has to... When, when it comes to the argumentation, uh, I don't think he thinks it through as well, just like he accuses us of doing, because, I mean, let's just agree that, you know, he did that for that purpose, that he just told it just so he could get crucified. Acts chapter 28, you still have to deal with that. Acts chapter 28, I'll get it real quick on my, pet, on my little uh, software. Um, Acts chapter 28, verses 25 to 27, which says... And when they agreed not among themselves, they departed. Who's the they? The, in verse 24 it says, some believe the things which were spoken and some believe not. And when they departed, Paul had spoken one word. Well spake the Holy Ghost by Isaiah, the prophet unto our fathers, saying, go unto this people and say, hearing ye shall hear and shall not understand and seeing ye shall see and not perceive. For the word of this people is waxed gross and their ears is dull of hearing and their eyes have they closed lest they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears and understand with their hearts and should be converted and I should heal them. Be it known therefore unto you that the salvation of God is sent unto the Gentiles and they will hear it. So he says it, he says this after he says that, you know, he was preaching something, therefore that some believed, some uh, were not, some didn't believe. And he says, and quotes Isaiah from a more oral Septuagint type of point, which if you go back and read the verse, he commands people to, he commands Isaiah to preach this unto people, preach something unto people so that they will not listen. And that, that once their hearts were fattened and uh, eyes were blinded and their ears closed, they would not be able to convert and be healed of their iniquities. Um, so this is Paul after the G- crucifixion of Jesus. Just want to, Point that out for all those wanting passages afterwards besides Second Corinthians. So, but Christian anarchists, I better never, ever, ever, ever be in a room with you again and hear you say that again, man. Especially if you're on mine, because I'm going to eject you as soon as you say it. I'm warning you right now. And here's the thing. I'll actually um, let him, uh, you know, have that at least. I Just so I can, you know, with Romans 14 and all that stuff, just so I don't, uh, cause him to stumble or cause his message to stumble and, and trying to get the gospel out there. If I'm in a room with him, I won't bring it up. Just for that. You know, I don't... You know, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't uh, go ahead. I was just saying, I mean, that's, that's obviously, that's, you know, that's very cool of you and everything, but I would also point out that that is creating, that's G-Man creating his own echo chamber. It's a, a view he doesn't like, and instead of addressing the view with you on an evil, even equal... Jesus, I'm, I'm, geez, I'm putting e- even and equal together and making one word, and it sounded awful. <laughs> um, but yeah, instead of a nice even playing field and just discuss it out with you, look at your side. And then even if he disagrees with it, instead of just being, I hate to say it this way, but being adult about it and understanding that there are people out there who disagree with his views and have uh, different views who are still who still love the lord and are still you know christians he would rather create an echo chamber mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. that unless you are 100% lockstep with his view of everything in the bible he will you know boot you out instead of 
talking about it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I hope that you know one day we can mature enough to have a discussion on this. If he even wants to have a debate, I mean, I'm open to having that. Um, but at the moment, I'm just doing my study on the whole thing, and people can comment or not. Some people have agreed with it and said it has actually helped them deal with some difficulties they've had with the Bible. So meaning that some people that have doubted the Bible um, have actually, you know, had their faith strengthened and their hope in God strengthened from reading it in this in this particular way. But then you have some that just disagree with it and find that uh, gut wrenching. Um, so it's not something everyone uh, should necessarily believe. Um, you know, but yeah, let's uh, continue the video um, and because we're almost done with it. So let's check out what we got. If I'm in a room with you, and I'm in your Google Hangout, I'm going to hit the ignore button. Because that is straight out false teaching. You can go around saying, oh, I still believe that G-Man's a Christian. I still believe. I don't care what your opinion is. Dude, you're going around telling people that God, that, 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 that God himself is stopping people from believing on Jesus. What, 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 what is wrong with you? Jesus himself said that a kingdom divided itself can't stand. All right, hold on a second. Uh, got to stop there because I got a comment there. And then also, uh, apparently, Metal dropped out. Uh, okay, his app uh, crashed. Uh, ah, great. We're using the Hangouts to do this. So maybe the you know, the usual uh, crashing kind of thing that happens. But um, yeah, just uh, to piggyback on that uh, statement. Um, Jesus said, therefore, I speak to them in parables because they seeing not and hearing or they seeing see not and hearing they hear not. Neither do they understand. He said he speaks in parables just for the purpose of them not being able to understand the specific people so that and he's quoting from Isaiah, Isaiah six verses nine through ten, which he says this in order that these people may be destroyed and judged. And this is at least afterwards in their adult life if they continue and persist in their rebellion against God. All right. So, uh, I don't know. I think uh, Mendel's probably about to try to join back in. Um, all right. All right. So, he's uh, getting his stuff settled. Uh, there we go. Sorry Say about that. Good. Yeah, the, yeah, the app just uh, crashed out on me there for a minute. That's what I get for, you know, unfortunately using an Android device. <laughs> no, it happens to some of the mobile users uh, here lately. But, uh, yeah, I was just saying, you know, what you say about Jesus speaking in parables and such. So let's uh, continue on with the video, see what uh, if there's anything new for the conclusion on this. How can Satan be divided from Satan? And how can God be fighting himself? That's just nonsense. Well, the, Utter the, 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 none of that's found in there. I'm just saying that right now, G-Man. Nonsense. Not to mention it goes against your total depravity. So if you believe that, you can't you can't claim Calvinism no more. Well, at least you can't be a five-pointer. You have to be a four-pointer now. Because you're going to kill total depravity, my friend. You're going to kill that all together. Because it's either... I just want to point out, he's said this, what, like maybe four or five times that it's contradicting total depravity even though originally he said that it has to be consistent with calvinism in order to believe this but now it's contradictory my here's my question according to g-man which is it is it consistent or not consistent which is it g-man just a, thought i'd bring that out it's either jesus is keeping you from i'm sorry it's either god himself is keeping you from believing or is your total depraved state that's keeping you from believing. Which one is it? Is it? Yes. <laughs> now I watched the video that you sent me, Christian Anarchist, regarding Matt Slick. <laughs> Matt Slick does not agree with you. Matt Slick does not agree with me, but at the same time, he understands where the argument can be made, which comes with the parable of Jesus, reason why he spake in them. So he says that uh you know you can uh hold to both views and that they're very consistent. Um so and I would agree with him, even though he disagrees with me on who exactly is in reference here. So, Slate believes that the God that's talked about there, the God of this world, is is Satan and not God Almighty. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, again, he quotes okay, Jesus. Okay, Corbin says, God can prevent them from believing if he has turned them over to a reprobate mind for their wickedness. I would agree with you. Yeah, you disagree on 2 Corinthians, Corinthians 4. 4. But in 1 Corinthians, it says... Oh, what were you going to say? I was going to say, welcome to our side. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that um, uh, uh, The Apostle Paul was talking about some sinners in the church that was doing some things. I believe it was... Uh, the one that was sleeping with their fa with, with their mother's with their father's mother or something like that, and it wasn't even done amongst the uh, against the heathens, right? And what did the apostle Paul say to do? He said, "Hand them over to Satan for the destruction of the flesh." Why? To get them to repent. If God is the one that's preventing them from believing, and that's the end goal to keep them from from, from believing so they can be thrown into hell or whatever, then why? Hand them over to the to, to, to the devil for the destruction of the flesh, which is what a, which is another way of saying that you're giving a, over to a reprobate mind. No, it isn't. <laughs> it's right there. He just says, "No, it isn't." Um, destruction I mean, of the flesh in an effort and because it will save their soul. Mm. If yeah. if it's the one I think he's talking about, I could be wrong because he didn't give an exact quotation. Um, but if it's the one that I'm thinking about, it was two believers who had fallen into sin and they were turned over to Satan in an effort to save their soul by destroying their flesh. They would literally was to to kill them so that they would stop sinning, mm -hmm. you know, that they would they would save their soul. If, if, I, if it's what I think it is that he's talking about. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, so let's see. We almost, we almost got this down. We got two minutes left of this. Let's see what we can do. Right. Why why hope for repentance if that's not his goal? Uh, Christian, okay. True empiricism says the problem is... All right, so I just want to keep in mind, here comes the true empiricism guy again. Hasn't, seen, hasn't really met me. Hasn't seen my videos. Doesn't know too much about me. Listen to what he says. I think that Christian anarchist does actually believe in God. But he is trying hard to water scripture down. He wants to exclude himself from doctrine, from sound doctrine, because. And that's all he uh, apparently says, because as Gmail will say, he's trying to finish up something. Um, uh, I don't know. You'd, you've known me for quite a while. Uh, Metal, what are, what, are you th what are your thoughts on, on that? On that? I'm, I'm trying to see where any of this waters scripture down. This doesn't make any sense. That doesn't make a lick of sense. If anything, it makes it... It's it's something that we would have to have even more faith and more love for God to understand and to accept. Exactly. Exactly. The, the watered-down version is to say that, well, it's just Satan's fault. It's always Satan's fault. Exactly. You definitely would see this in, like, the liberal universalist uh, churches preaching that uh, particular idea. Or even in Seventh-day Adventist churches where they eventually believe all sin will be placed on Satan as opposed to being, you know, having Satan be the one, or Satan, jeez. You, you've got to stop getting me up these, you know, this early, man. This is killing me. <laughs> <laughs> um, but in, instead of Jesus bearing our sins on the cross. Mm -hmm. Well, now, instead, we have uh, Satan bearing those sins in hell. Well, who, which is it? You know, is it Satan's fault? Or is it our fault? And that's why we need a savior. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely, man. We need a savior. All right. So about a minute 30 left. Let's see if how much we can go through that. This is going to be a challenge here. See how much we can go without uh, cutting him off on this one. Like, we got like two, three more hours to go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. All right. So let's see what we can do. One minute, 30 seconds. Can we do it without interrupting? Let's try and see. I guess he's going to keep writing and whatnot. Okay. Yeah, I do wonder if true. So is our videos. simple nature that keeps us from coming to Christ, right? Or is it not our simple nature that keeps us from coming to Christ? That is God Himself that keeps us from coming to Christ. Seven times he said something like this. Second Corinthians chapter uh, four, verse four. And Christian anarchist is a false teacher at this point. I can't deal with it no more. Be bold about what you believe. Stop walking around here, buying into these these compromising doctrines because you want to be everybody's friend. How is this going to make me friends with people? Uh, I'm, this is one of the biggest problems I have with, with G-Man. Listen, 
as a brother in Christ, you know, I love him as a brother in Christ, but he has got to stop with the insults, with the childish behavior. You know, this has got to stop. This is not evidence of a, a, a uh, someone who is um, mature in the faith. This mm-hmm. is the evidence of someone who, it, it almost comes across like he's looking for more followers and more yeahs and rah rahs from the people who follow him as opposed to just having a discussion on the truth. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Uh, but again, how is this compromising? In fact, if I was to say this to an atheist, I'm pretty sure that they might find that an interesting interpretation since it's different from the traditional hist- from the American traditional understanding from some of the people. But they'll say, how can you believe in such a thing? When it came to Calvinism, oh, you can better believe the atheists weren't too happy with me. So how would I be compromising if I believed in this particular thing which says that it's the God of the Bible that's doing this whole thing? I mean, just think about that. Just think about that. Think about that. If, if anything else, it would actually almost lend them ammunition. I mean, in their own minds, anyway, because they would be like, "Oh, see, God is just evil." You know, this is this. Is, you can't follow him. He's evil. Where if you actually follow what the rest of Scripture says, and you don't look at one verse totally in a vacuum, you understand what's actually going on. And you understand that that does not make God evil by any stretch of the imagination. It makes it more difficult for us and not easier. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, like I said, yeah. falsehood flies and the truth comes limping after. Mm-hmm. All right, so let's see. Almost a minute. We went 30 seconds without trying to let the whole thing there. But so far, we're good. Let's see. Let's see. <laughs> That, that, that's, that should be a challenge, right? Let's see how much you can watch without having to cut in from the, the stuff that's being stated. Impossible. Almost. Yeah, exactly. So let's see what we got. Okay, Till says, good speaking out on this year, man. I felt the need as well and did a and did a hang a hang on Flat Out Elected about it. About it. So I'm glad uh, you did that. Uh, I'm very happy you did it. Because it bothered me when you first to- told me about this and that people actually believe this. Yeah, just to let y'all know, because we're going to let this finish a little bit. Uh, Teal is a member of the Flat Out Elected group and that they did a hangout on Calvinism trying to talk about how damaging it was to the image of God. Um, because Flat Eartherism isn't damaging. Ex- exactly. <laughs> All right, let's see what we got. Um, so, uh, Christian anarchists, you need to repent, man. And this is your opportunity to show that you're legit, that you are in the faith, and that you... Um, you do fear God, man, and that you can admit when you're wrong. Go on your YouTube channel, apologize to everyone in the great debate community, especially the household of faith, that you were wrong about this. It contradicts your own worldview. It contradicts scripture. And you simply just was flat out wrong about this. And when you do that, the body of Christ will accept you and receive you as if you never did any of this. And, and in the future, try not to, um, it's so easily deceived about scriptures like that. And until next time, guys. This has been another edition of uh, Preaching to the Choir Ministries, I hope. Okay, so he uh, ends it there. Um, let me get the speaker off. All right. So final thoughts on that one, uh, Metal? Just that, like I said at the start of this, where if you start with a false premise, everything that follows behind it is going to be false. Mm-hmm. He started with a false dichotomy. And a, a, full, a misunderstanding of the idea of total inability. And he tried to hang a bunch of, you know, different arguments off of it, and it collapsed under its own weight. You cannot take the, the as Dr. White mentions, you know, it's, the ideas are more like that of a diamond. All those different facets in perfect harmony in a perfect shape. Well, you can't squash that flat and expect you're going to get everything out of it and understand what it means and then rightly divide what we believe. It just will not happen. And unfortunately, in like I said, in this case, G-Man has not just squashed it paper thin, he's squashed it down to a one-dimensional object. I mean, there's just no depth to it at all. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> yeah. I mean, like and like I said, we we're trying. We're not doing this to be hard on G-Man. I mean, we 
because I mean, I've went to a council, a bunch of people on this. They had different views on it. Uh, Vincent like Lassonde or Lincoln, however you say it, uh, is he agrees it's referring to God, um, and a couple others agree the same thing. And some that believe it's the referring to the devil, they don't view this as a, a heresy, such as Matt Slick. Um, he doesn't see it as a thing that's blasphemy or divisive. Um, so now he, so G Man's probably going to be on the Bible Thumping Wingnut show um, Sunday to discuss this. So we'll we'll see how that turns out. We'll see where it goes. Um, but 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 yeah, uh, ultimately I think what we need to do is just like I said, I don't care what you believe on this uh, particular topic of whether it's referring to the God or the devil, but you still have to recognize one thing that God is still in control over everything regardless of who is the god or the theos that's mentioned in that passage and as long as you believe that you believe god is in full control over everything and that if it's the devil he can't even do anything without permission by god that's what you have to recognize to know that we have an all-powerful almighty god that loves his creation and cares for it so i just want y'all to keep that in mind I uh, thank Metal Minister for coming on here to discuss this issue because I didn't just want to be likewise being an epic echo chamber of this idea. I just I wanted to get someone who he's himself stated he's on the fence on the issue. He's not taking anyone's side um, on the matter. And he's able to see and review what G-Man is, uh, is saying and how, you know, he's just wrong on the idea that it's something that needs to have a call to repentance of and this is not just from metal but a bunch of brothers and sisters in christ so we're hoping i'm i, I pray and hope that we can be reconciled on this just like uh other people um are able to as well um so thank you all for tuning in uh, uh metal minister if if you'd like to uh would you uh like to sign us off in prayer sure but first i have to say and i think we did james white proud no, thank, 20 thank, minutes, thank you. 20, thank you. 20, well, twenty-minute video, and it took us almost two hours. <laughs> uh, dear Heavenly Father, we pray that uh, what we have said here today is not divisive. We are not looking to cause strife in the body. That all we want to do is actually bring everyone together and to understand that we have enough problems with false teachers, true false teachers out there that we should focus on and not to be dividing ourselves lord we pray that these words will will touch the hearts perhaps of those who may not know you that you will use them to soften their hearts to give them a heart of flesh and replace their heart of stone and bring them to you lord and we we pray that all of this reconciles uh to you and that we also pray that we you know we also know that in all things you are in control lord ultimately and that all things work to the good for those who love you so we pray lord in all of this in jesus name amen amen yes lord thank you for that all right that's all the time we have for theological discussion uh tune in next time and i hope you all have a great day but until then this has been the christian anarchist shalom aleichem peace be upon you because i wish that upon you have a good day